Well, good morning and welcome back to Central Ontario. Bit of a miserable day, warm today, but we're getting a lot of rain and a lot of wind coming. But today we're going to tackle the great debate. Especially if you're a new tractor owner or you've been looking at new tractors and you've never owned one before, when you look at the spec sheets, there's a whole lot of confusing stuff in there. And a lot of the confusion rides around what lift capacity is uh, and this thing called breakout force. And finally, I decided to dig into it and I think I've got it figured out. So grab a coffee, let's talk. So when I was doing my diligence and trying to go through different tractor manufacturers and trying to weed out and try to figure out what type of tractor I wanted to buy for my first tractor, I was confused as many as you are by a lot of terms that were used, how they relate to each other, how to figure out what a tractor should or shouldn't do. And what really spurred me on is, as you know, over the last 12 months, I've done a lot of pretty remarkable things with this little tractor, including about two weeks ago on, I think it was video 90, I lifted the biggest ash timber I've ever lifted with this tractor which posed a lot of questions, got a lot of good comments from folks, which finally drove me to go back in, spend the time, and try to figure out this breakout force, how you figure out what the real rated lift capacity is of that tractor, and how they relate to each other. I looked online, I had no idea there was such a big debate over the definition or how you interpret what breakout force is versus lift capacity. There are as many threads on tractor forums as you can possibly find and read on this topic and everybody seems to have a slight variation on what it means or what their interpretation of it is. And as well, I went to my tractor dealer, I spent some time with them going through the manual trying to understand it. I think I got it figured out. And so today for you new tractor owners, I'd love it if you stuck around. Uh, for the guys that are more experienced, I'd really like you to watch the video. And at the end of the video, if you don't agree with my interpretation or my view on it, I'd love to hear about it in the comments, and of course if you do, I'd love to hear that too. But if you think I've got any part of this wrong or incorrect, I would love it if you could show me or explain to me why it's incorrect, because I'm pretty sure I figured it out. So let's get at it. All right, the tractor's turned off. The first thing I want to do before we start talking is I want to show you what happens when I raise the loader to its highest level. And in this case with the B2601, it's about six and a half feet is its max height. But I want you to watch the curl cylinders as well as the lift cylinder when I raise this bucket or the uh, the grapple. Okay, so you'll notice that the curl cylinders don't move at all through the entire arc of that uh, lift. The pistons remain fully deep inside the cylinder housing, whereas your lift cylinders, you'll notice that the cylinder or the piston is fully extended to the end of this cylinder. Okay, so we got our loader up in the air and don't worry, I'm not going to walk under it. That's why I haven't braced it. What you're going to find is when you're looking at all these different tractors as you're trying to go through them, you'll have a standard set of specs. And they all basically, I think, as Neil Messick's mentioned, there's an associate, association in the States that has agreed that all tractors should show certain types of specs in the same way to help people like us to compare. So you're going to see that one of the specs you're going to see on that tractor is the maximum load it can handle at its highest height. So in the case of a B2601, it's 934 pounds. I know that I can, in theory, safely lift within its rating, 934 pounds in a bucket or on this grapple, you know, in case I want to take load and dump it into the back of my pickup truck. But at the end of the day, 99% of what you do is going to be on the ground, unless, you know, you've got a function or you're doing work where you're constantly loading trucks. So it'll tell you how much the maximum weight is on the ground. What you won't find is you won't find a weight rating for how much it'll lift at the ground. But what you do always see is this thing called breakout force. And this is what seems to be contentious and everybody has a different view of it. So we're going to talk about breakout force in a minute. But either way, I just want you to remember, curl cylinder doesn't move, it stays fully retracted. Your lift cylinder is fully extracted, which means in theory, this cylinder is not as strong when the piston is fully outside of it than it is when it's fully collapsed. Okay, so let me try to use a simple example to try to explain the difference between the lift capacity of the tractor and the breakout force of the tractor. 
on the B2601, I have a breakout force, and I'll show you in the manual in a minute, of over 2,100 pounds. However, the lift capacity of that tractor at the ground is only about 1,200 pounds, and up at six and a half feet in the air, it's only 934 pounds. But let's take a look at this block, simply. And this might take you back to high school physics, which, by the way, I didn't do very good at, but I kind of remembered a few things. And the main thing that I remembered is that if you want to lift a static object off the ground, you have to exert more force to get it off the ground than you do to lift it after. Right? So when you look at this block, assume that this block weighs 50 pounds. It's sitting on the ground. In order to lift that 50 pound block off the ground, I need to be able to exert more than 50 pounds of force to get it to get off the ground. Once I got it up, it's not so bad. But to get it off the ground in the first place, I need to be able to apply more force or pressure or newtons or whatever they are in order to lift it, you know, with gravity and all those good things. So if you think about it, whenever you lift something with your buddy, what do you do? You guys grab both sides, you, you breathe a few times, we always count to three, and then we heave as hard as we can to get it up. And once we got her up, it's not so bad. But initially getting it off the ground takes a lot of muscle. And once you got her up and you're carrying it, it isn't so bad. Same kind of thing with breakout force in the tractor. When you read and you show that you've got a breakout force of 2,100 pounds, that doesn't mean you can lift 2,100 pounds. What it's telling you is that the lift cylinders of that tractor are engineered that they will exert 2,100 pounds of force to lift the 1,200 pounds that it's able to carry. That's the difference. The second thing I wanted to point out is you'll notice that there's always a spec at, for example, the bucket pins, and then they give you another weight capacity at 19 inches or whatever forward of the pins. The reason why is because if you remember again, if you're lifting something at home, if you grab it and it's close to your body and you lift it up, it's a lot easier than if that thing's out there and you've got to reach out and lift it like this. It takes much less force and much, much less strength to lift it here close to your body. So bucket pins are here, it can lift this much weight. But if you've got pallet forks, for example, on the front of your tractor, and you have this thing sitting out at the end of those pallet forks, what, why they give you the two measurements is because in order for that tractor to break out and lift it way out here, it takes more energy to lift it out here than it does if you have your load nice and tight to your bucket pins. Let's go take a look at the manual. All right, when you buy your front end loader in your tractor, you're gonna get them an operator's manual. Notice this is not the Kubota tractor manual. This is a specific manual that's specific to the front end loader. You'll get that separately. And somewhere in this manual, whether regardless of what manufacturer you have, you're gonna get a sheet called operational specifications. You're gonna have some pictures of the tractor and you're also gonna get some graphs that show the weight curves relative to that tractor. We're gonna go through this and I'm gonna to try to zoom in for you. Okay, so the first thing you wanna look at is you're gonna see that you've got a lift capacity at the bucket pivot pin at its maximum height for the B2601 at six and a half feet and you're gonna be able to lift 948 pounds in that bucket at the maximum height of the tractor. So we've already looked at that. However, it doesn't tell me what does that mean when I'm down on the ground and how much can I lift off the ground? Because I get it, you know, the tractor swings in an arc or the, the loader does as you lift it up and it makes sense to me that you're gonna be able to hold less weight at the top than you can at the bottom, but how much can you hold at the bottom? That's the big question. As you come down here, you've also got, as I mentioned to you, your lift capacity 500 millimeters forward of this pin. So in other words, at the edge of the bucket tip. And this goes to my point about trying to lift weight close to your body versus out, you know, two feet in front of you. You're gonna be able to lift less with the same force. Your lift capacity forward at the maximum height. Now you have no other lift capacities as far as the bucket goes. They start talking about this breakout force. And at your breakout force on the bucket, which is measured at the ground, which you can see in the chart and you'll see in your own manual, in fact is 2,146 pounds. That's a lot of pounds. But that doesn't mean the tractor can lift 2,146 pounds. It means it can exert that much force upwards so to speak to try to lift a weight you'll notice they'll give you they'll show you the bucket at different heights right because you also have your breakout force at 1500 millimeters above the ground so basically around halfway so it kind of tells you how much breakout force at different area different parts of the bucket as it lifts to its height its, its maximum height 
tells your raising time, those kind of things. We also have this thing called rollback force, which I'm not quite sure what that is, but I think it has something to do with the curl cylinders as opposed to the lift cylinders. Okay, so let's look at this chart that accompanies the specs. This is a lift capacity chart. You've got one axis that gives you the height off the ground of the bucket, and you have another axis that's telling you how much weight that fell can lift at that height. And as we just explained, the higher you lift the bucket, the less weight you're able to put in that bucket. But let's just take a look at the ability to lift weight and hold it about two feet off the ground because that's basically where you're going to carry it. You always want to keep it low to the ground. So what this graph tells me is that at the pivot pin, and we'll just keep to that, at about two feet off the ground, I am able to lift about 700 kilograms, which is about 1,550 pounds. So when I lifted that ash timber two weeks ago, I actually had it generally at its max capacity that it's rated for. I didn't exceed the capacity. I, f I was right within it because that weight of that timber, including my grapple, was somewhere around 1,500 pounds. So I know I was right about in the sweet spot. So at the end of the day, it looks like as huge as that ash timber was at 1,500 or 1,550 pounds, it was still within the weight rating of this little tractor, which I'm really pleased to hear because I wasn't sure if I was, ex you know, I was stretching the envelope a bit, but actually it's well within its rating which is great now of course don't forget you've got to make sure you got lots of ballast and weight in the back to offset that weight in the front and you know other safety things but at the end of the day this little tractor lifts a lot of weight so i'm pretty pleased i think i got it right and again i welcome any comments from folks if you disagree or if you think i may be inaccurate in some of the things that i've figured out uh, i'd love to hear it but other than that i think we uh solved the mystery <laughs> anyways if you like the channel please click subscribe Hit the like button, and if you want to know when I'm posting videos, just please click the little bell. Have a wonderful weekend with your families, and we'll see you again. Cheers.